one man at the mic for the Buffs. CU commentator Mark Johnson talked with our own Paul Harris about Colorado athletics. We're here with Mark Johnson from KOA. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for joining us. You've been happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Given the turmoil of the football and basketball programs over the past three years, do you think the ship has been righted? That's kind of a broad question. Uh, and at this point, I think I need some combat pay for what I've gone through the last right. seven years. I mean, this this has not been, you know, a real highlight or high uh, period for the Buffaloes from mm -hmm. a competitive standpoint. Uh, you know, I think back just a few years ago, it was the Dan Hawkins' second year when they won, what, two games? Basketball won seven. I think right. I was the only BCS announcer in the country that did not call ten victories combined the two sports. So, obviously, this is kind of a dark period for Colorado right. athletics. And so, to, you know, to, to answer if, if it's, the ship has been righted, I, I think it's a little bit uh, a little uncertain at this point in time. I like what I'm seeing from basketball. I think Tad Boyle's doing a nice job. Obviously, there's some great talent there with Alec Burks and, and Corey Higgins. It appears to be going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. What was your expectations at the beginning of the season, and do you feel this team has or has not met those expectations? I figure probably 18, 19 wins. They're on pace for that at this point in time. Uh, that's why I think Tad Boyle's done some great things. Right. Uh, they've got some wonderful perimeter talent, obviously. Alec Burks is, is a lottery pick. Uh, hopefully he sticks around you know, one more year to play for Colorado. Well, switching gears a little bit, um, A.J. Green, wide receiver from Georgia that we mm -hmm. played last year in football, he was suspended this uh, the past season for selling his jersey, yet universities make millions of dollars off the merchandising of players. Do you think we have entered an era where the haves and have-nots are so great that it's time to start playing athletes a stipend? You know, the problem with that is, and, and my, my initial response is, yes, they need something. But, but the problem with that becomes the slippery slope aspect of it. Uh, there has to be something because ultimately when you look at what these kids are asked to do in college, it's, it's a full-time job on top of going to school. They are doing a great service for the school. They need to get something in return. And I'm, I'm not saying they need, you know, when it's all said and done for on their way out the door, hand them a check for $100,000. That's not what I'm talking about. But because they're unable to go out and make a couple of bucks to go out with their friends on a Saturday night or whatever it might be, there has to be something. And, and I don't know that I've got the answer for it. I just know the way the system is set up right now, they're being cheated in some respects and, and held back a little bit from a social standpoint, which is part of what college is supposed to be about. Well, let me pick your brain then up for a little bit. So if I can make you the head of the NCAA right now. All right. What are the well, I wish you had that power. <laughs> what are the top three things that you would change instantly? Hmm. Uh, number one uh, would, would be a college football playoff. I think that needs to happen. Uh, it's always been a hollow argument to me when they say, you know, the number one thing you hear is we can't have a college football playoff because – Kids are going to miss class. Right. Well, uh, I was with Syracuse University back in 2003 when they won the national championship uh, with Carmelo Anthony and Jerry McNamara and that group. Uh, I believe, if memory serves, we were on the road 28 out of 35 days during the spring semester. A college football playoff would take place during the semester break for the most part. Mm -hmm. So it's not like these student athletes would be missing a great deal of class time. That would be number one. Number two would be the issue we just talked about, and that is – allowing the students to have something, and I'm not talking about a huge sum of money here. It may be, you know, $100 a month or just something so they have, you know, opportunity to go out and act, uh, be active socially. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that would be number one. Uh, and, and number one would be a little bit like we see in the National Football League of leveling the playing field in some form or fashion. And, and I haven't, you know, thought in great depth on how you might do that, but I, I, you, you made reference to the haves and have-nots a while ago. That's becoming an enormous issue, which is why I think the move to the Pac-12 for Colorado is better because in the Big 12, in particular the Big 12 South, it's become an arms race, and right. the Buffalo simply could not, uh, you know, maintain the position that they were or even uh, try to maintain a position with Texas and Oklahoma and, and some of these schools. And so there's got to be some way to level that playing field a little bit, and so I think that would be number three. Is there a way that people can follow you? Are you on Twitter? Can, what's yeah. your Twitter account? Yeah, I believe an old guy like me has actually figured uh, Twitter out. So, okay. yeah, you can go mjohnson850koa and uh, whatever's on my mind. A lot of buff stuff, obviously, right. but whatever's on my mind about the world of sports we get to on there. Well, thank you very much for sitting down with me. If you'd like to see our extended interview, check out our YouTube page at youtube.com sportsmag. And now back to you guys at the desk. 
The CU's men's golf team finished 13th in the second annual Battle at the Beach. Rallying to win the event were the host of the Bruins of UCLA. UCLA. They shot the lowest final round score en route to the victory. CU suffered its first last place finish since the 2005 Louisiana Classic. Next up for CU, the Brandon Dunes Invitational in Oregon on March 11th and 12th. Love was in the air this Valentine's weekend in the form of women's tennis. The bus beat the Metro State Roadrunners 7-love or 7-0. CU took all three doubles matches, then proceeded to win every singles matchup as well. Michaela Jensen got back to her winning ways after losing her only match of the season last week. The bus faced the Oregon Ducks on the courts today. Corey Higgins left the, led the Buffs in their upset victory over the Kansas State Wildcats. His 17 points in the big win makes Higgins CU Sports Mag's Athlete of the Week. I think the best thing about Saturday was that we competed as hard as possible. We didn't let uh, the refs um, bother us. We didn't let uh, the calls that didn't go our way bother us. So I think that was the biggest thing is that we stayed together and uh, really competed as a team. We needed a big win and uh, we came up with one on Saturday, especially dropping the win in Texas A&M uh, on Wednesday. So that was huge for us just uh, for momentum purposes and then uh, really uh, finishing this year strong so we can uh, try to do something special. I think the toughest thing there is uh, the runs that they go on. They go on big runs when they're at home and uh, I just think if we can limit those to uh, as uh, small uh, as possible, that will be in good shape. I'm Corey Higgins, C Sports Mag Athlete of the Week. Just six days after trouncing Nebraska by 25 points, the women's basketball team came out flat at home against Texas Tech. The Buffs had a season low in points and a season high in turnovers while shooting just 33% from the field. The Red Raiders capitalized on Colorado's miscues, shooting 64% in the first half and route to a 16-point lead at the break. C was unable to make up any ground in the second half, hitting one of nine from downtown. Britney Spears was the only buff to score in double figures for the Colorado, and they went down 72-44. to With the men's basketball team traveling to Lawrence this weekend to take on the Kansas Jayhawks, that got us thinking. When was the last time the Buffs won at the Allen Fieldhouse? We'll have the answer later in the show. After the break, Derek Kessinger and Andrew Tomasini look forward to the men's basketball game at Kansas. But first, the sports guy, Matthew Hanlon, breaks down the close win versus Kansas State. A big K-State win for the Buffs. Well, it was a huge win for the program going ahead in this season for the Buffaloes. They won the first time they've beaten Kansas State twice in the same year since the 2003-2004 season, which is huge for these guys going ahead with this program. You saw guys, they shut down Curtis Kelly. He's one of their big scorers. They played a lot of really good defense down in the low post against him and enabled him to be out of his rhythm, not really get his scoring going. Jacob Pullen had another 12 points added for the Kansas State Wildcats, which was, you know, which was different from the last game that they played when they went down there to Kansas State and Manhattan. He had 22 points, six assists, and five rebounds for Kansas State, which was uh, capable for them, but they couldn't get the win when we went down there, which was great for these guys. 56-58 was the Colorado score this time, in comparison to the 74-66 showdown out in Manhattan. I just have a lot of things that I really you could take from that game. Um, Levi Knutson, once again, he does something great for these guys, comes off the bench. He actually started in this game because of the... Um, lack there of at the starting position for the point guard position. But he had seven point, 17 points in comparison to the 20 points that he had last time they played, which was fantastic. But you, it was a game that you really couldn't, they couldn't really get into rhythm. There's a lot of fouls. There was um, 20 personal fouls for Colorado, tw uh, 20, excuse me, 20 for Kansas State and 27 for uh, Colorado, which was Important and key for these guys because they got to the line 18 times, made 22 of them. Where in comparison, it was 18 to 31 for Kansas State, 58% comparison to 81, which is huge for a team that needs to finish out with guys like that. But uh, Shannon Sharp, Ben Mills had great games. Uh, ben Mills had two blocks, eight points for uh, for Shannon Sharp. Huge games for these guys. Thank you, Matt, for joining us on the desk. Great analysis there. Oh, well, thank you. For the first 15 minutes Wednesday night, the women's basketball team played tough against Kansas State, but a 20-4 run to end the half gave the Wildcats a commanding lead. KSU extended the lead after the intermission and beat the Buffs 78-51. Off, off the bench, Chucky Jeffrey was the only CU player to score in double figures, adding 18 points. CU plays number 20 Iowa State this Saturday as the Cyclones look to avenge their earlier upset at the hands of the Buffs. 
junior golfer Jessica Wallace was invited to join Canada's amateur golf team in January. Wallace is el eligible to participate in the British and Canadian amateur championships. The year-long program incorporates elements including fitness, for sports psychology, nutrition, and technique. The Buffs open their spring season this weekend at Stanford. All right, now we have Derek Kessinger and Andrew Tomasini at the double team desk. Take it away, guys. Welcome to the double team set alongside Derek Kissinger. I'm Andrew Tomasini previewing this weekend's matchup as CU heads to Lawrence, Kansas to play the Jayhawks. Now, Tad Boyle has been there before. He knows what it's like to play at Allen Fieldhouse. What is CU going to have to do to get the job done Saturday versus KU? Well, the big thing is rebounding. They were out-rebound 35-19 in the game in Boulder earlier this month. They really need to force offensive rebounds. They only got three offensive rebounds in the whole game, and that turned into Kansas getting 22 second chance points to Colorado's two. That's a huge differential. Now, really, when you go back to the game that was played here in Boulder when CU took on KU, it was an 82-78 to 70, 78 loss, and Shannon Sharp really didn't have really any role in that game whatsoever. This weekend, I think he's going to be a crucial part for CU to get the win. Nate Tomlinson's going to be back in the lineup, but talk about some of those injuries and how Shannon will eventually add to the roster. Well, Shannon really had a lot of energy against Kansas State. We really saw the things that we thought Shannon was going to do earlier in the year, and he really translated into that. Tomlinson's a great ball handler. He doesn't get a lot of points, but he really is the heart of the Buffs offense. And so it's going to be great to have him back. On the Kansas side, Selby's going to be playing, but he's going to be about 50%, 80%. We're not really sure. He's been slowing up the team a little bit, and that may hurt them. But he had 15 points against the Buffs. Also, Robinson's going to be out for Kansas. He's been a big factor for them. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on the Morris twins, which means that they'll be really trying to force, force the pressure, which hurt them in the Kansas State game. Both of them got into foul trouble early. Yes, someone, somewhat of an uncomfortable situation. And speaking of uncomfortable, playing at Allen Fieldhouse. Now, obviously, Tad Boyle knows what it's like to play on the home side of things there. But now he's going to come in the first time during his CU tenure to Allen Fieldhouse. Why is it so difficult to play there? And what is CU going to have to do to kind of Get rid of that crowd, the emotion, the electricity that's there. The atmosphere is amazing. 17,000 plus in comparison to 11,000 plus here at the event center. What is CU going to have to do to kind of block that out? I mean, it's an NBA-style crowd with a college atmosphere, which really adds a lot. A three kills the game. If you get a three as a home team, that's it, because it's lights out against the other team. They really need to control the pressure early. They need to play strong defense and handle the ball well. They had six turnovers in the game against Kansas, and each one of those turnovers was crucial for Kansas' win. How much do you think the loss Monday night kind of affects the mindset that KU is going to come into this weekend's matchup versus CU? Personally, I think that they're going to be all fired up. How do you think that that loss, which was really was a blowout loss in Manhattan to K-State, how does that affect their psyche? Well, Coach Kansas's coach, Bill Self, is obviously worried. He's said that multiple times this week. I really think that they are either going to come together or they're going to fall apart in this game, and this is going to have a great impact on their season. But on CU's side, if they can just stay in the game early, keep forcing the pressure, and have a great game from Alec Burks, I think it's going to be a win for the Buffs. So you talked about a win for the Buffs and Alec Burks having an outstanding performance. Do you have a score? Or do you think it's simply going to be if Alec Burks has a good game, we're going to get the W? I think it's all on the shoulders of Alec Burks. Higgins has really carried this team recently, but a great game from Burks where he rebounds, he dunks, he really does the plays that make Alec Burks an NBA talent. I think that this could be a win for the Buffs. And interestingly enough, you brought up an amazing point earlier before we got to this point right now here on the double team set. Talk about CU's schedule going down the road. Well, this Saturday they're playing Kansas, the number one team in, team in the country. Kansas lost to Kansas State, which means they will no longer be the number one team. And at number two, Texas, who rolls into Boulder, Colorado next Saturday. So CU takes on Kansas this weekend in Lawrence, Kansas. For Derek Kissinger, I'm Andrew Tomasini. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, guys. Coming up, Megan Thompson went on campus to see what students knew about the men's basketball squad. And we'll reveal that trivia question. Stay tuned. Faces the last leg of their schedule. CU students reflect on the season thus far. Sports Mag's Megan Thompson went to the UMC to get their opinions. I'm Megan Thompson with this week's Man on the Street. And I'm here on campus catching up with students to see how closely they followed this year's men's basketball team. Uh, is it Cody Hawkins? For basketball. Or I mean... <laughs> 
Uh, probably Alex Burks. Oh man, can't remember. He's it's like Corey something. I I can't. Corey Higgins? Corey Higgins, I think. I would say Levi, but I don't know. Don't know. Uh, Missouri and. I don't know if Kansas State was ranked and beat him, but that might be the other team. Missouri and. Um, can't think of the other one. Because I know that we beat uh, Maryland, I think it was. I don't know. Uh, I haven't looked at my schedule yet. Kansas? From band members to diehard fans, students have a wide range of knowledge about this 2010-2011 men's basketball season. For CU Sports Mag, I'm Megan Thompson. Last weekend, Emma Coburn ran away from the competition at the Husky Classic. The junior ran the second fastest mile in CU history, running a blistering pace of 4 minutes and 37 seconds. Coburn just missed out hitting the NCAA automatic qualifying time in the mile by less than half a second. Later in the week, Joe Morris kept his blistering pace at the Air Force invite. He ran a 6.77 second race to uh, finish runner-up in the 60-meter dash. The Buffs stay close to home this weekend by participating in the Mines Twilight in Golden. Did you figure out the answer to the trivia question yet? If not, here's a little reminder. When was the last time that the Buffs won at Allen Fieldhouse? The answer is February 10th uh, with 1983, and the score was 75 to 74. The buff runners are ahead of the herd on the course as well in the classroom. Both the men's and women's cross country team earned all academic team honors by the United States Track and Field Association. The, to earn a spot in the all academic squad, a team must have a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. The men's team had a cumulative GPA of 3.1 to finish the semester, while the women's team earned just over a 3.25. Sophomore Laura Tremblay earned individual all academic honors as well with just over a 3.7. Laura was the leading runner for the women's team in the fall, placing 23rd at nationals and earning her first all American honor. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. If you want more Buffs action, you can check out www.cusportsmag.com. For Audie Streaman, I'm Andy McDonald. Have a good week.